Hi folks, I am Steve the Hurricane, and this is A Drink with the Hurricane. Cheers. So for today's episode of A Drink with the Hurricane, we are wrapping up a four week series on goal setting and time management. And so we're in the goal setting segment. And last week I talked about those smarter goals. And just to recap, if this is your first time seeing it, a smarter goal is an acronym. So you want to write this down. It's a goal that's specific, measurable, achievable, realistic, time-framed, exciting, and relevant. And my pastor actually had shared that in a sermon at the beginning of the year, and I thought it was amazing, so that's why I wanted to share that with you. Now, can picking up with where we left off last week, last week we left off with realistic, so today we're gonna to pick up with time frame or timing. When you have a goal, when you set a goal, you wanna give yourself a deadline, which is kinda of what I had mentioned earlier in the time management part of it, but this is your time frame. So if you remember last week I talked about how I used to be 350 pounds when I was 24 years old and from 24 to 25 I gone down 125 pounds to only 225. Now for somebody who's six foot one and a half, somebody uh, with my with my my hand size, my bone size, you know, I, I have a large skeleton, my muscle structure that I have, 225 is less than 12% body fat for me. So that's that's where I want to be. That's ideal. Now, I knew I could get to this point because I had been 225 in the past with this height when I was in high school and college. So I knew I could do it and I knew that that was going to be healthy. How much time would it take though to go from 350 pounds to 225? Now, this was a goal that I wanted to push myself on. I didn't want to just do it overnight. I knew it couldn't be done. I couldn't do it in a month. I didn't get the 350 pounds overnight. I knew it wasn't going to come off overnight. But I knew if I pushed myself really hard, I was 24 when I weighed myself at that 350, I knew that I wanted to be, I needed to be. 225 pounds by the time I turned 25 years old. So I gave myself a one year time frame. Now we've all seen The Biggest Loser and all those other uh, extreme makeover weight loss edition and all the shows out there. People can lose that kind of weight in one year. It takes a lot of discipline, takes a lot of pushing and, and determination to get it done, but it can be done. Now for the business and what we do is the same thing. I want to grow my business this year. 2016. So you're watching this video. It's March. It's the end of the first quarter. I have three quarters of the year left to hit my goal. What am I going to do to obtain this goal week to week, month to month, quarter to quarter, so that when 2016 is finished and all said and done, and I'm looking at my P&Ls, I hit the goal that I wanted. And what is your goal? You know, do you want to have a hundred thousand dollars profit a quarter? Do you want to have a hundred thousand profit? by the end of the year. These are all great goals to have, but again, giving yourself the timeline and the deadline, that's going to hold you accountable and you must track your progress, measure it week to week, month to month to make sure that you're going to hit it in the time frame that you set for yourself. The next two, I spend a lot of time on the time frame because these next two are the fun ones. You want it to be something exciting and this is why it's a smarter goal because we've all heard of smart goals, but the E in smarter is exciting. Something that, that gets you fired up, something that you can wake up every single day because this is a long-term goal. This is a goal for the whole rest of the year. For the next three quarters, this is going to be what I'm focusing my efforts on. So you want to make sure it's something exciting. And that's why I mentioned profitability. It's nice to have that profit at the end of the year. That's bonuses for your staff. That's holidays for yourself. If you have children, it's college funds, everything else. It, 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 one day you're going to turn around and sell your business, hopefully. you know These are all different exciting exciting goals. So you're going to want to do it. Every day I'm working towards that goal. Yes, it's something that's exciting, not something that's dreary. You're going to be like, I don't want to do this, right? When I wanted to go to the gym and worked out, there were many times I didn't want to go to the gym, but I pictured myself going to the beach, going out there and having fun and, 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 and having something that's exciting by being able to you know, take my shirt off and be comfortable in public. That's awesome and it was great. Buying new clothes was exciting. And finally, last but not least, it has to be something relevant. Along the lines of exciting, it has to be relevant to you and your organization. 
So it, it, going to the to the weight loss is easier for me. Uh, what was my purpose for this? I wanted to be healthy. I didn't want to be the client. If you remember at the beginning, I said I noticed that people coming to me for services in their 50s and 60s were morbidly obese, whereas people coming to me when I feel they should need home care were in their 70s, 80s, and 90s. Those people weren't obese. So I didn't want to be a statistic. I wanted to be healthier. So it was a relevant goal to me. It was important to me to grow your business, to grow your organization. What, what's your mission statement? You want to help people, right? That's why you became a nurse. That's why you started this business. You wanted to earn more income, right? So it, it, it care first and the money comes second. But care first, the money second. But it's got to be a relevant goal. So if I want to have uh, uh, grow a million dollars this year over what I did last year, which is which is a realistic goal, can be done. It takes a lot of work, but it can be done. How am I going to achieve it? What's my relevancy here? How many patients do I have to provide care for? And how long do I have to keep those people on services? Well, to keep people on services, what do you have to do? You have to up your game. You have to take better care of them. You have to be more involved with their care coordination. Communicate with the family better. Those are going to give you more retention. These are all things that we do with our coaching clients. And we talk to them about how we can retain our clients and keep them on services longer. By doing better work, taking better care of our people, that's going to help us to achieve our goal. And so, therefore, it is a relevant goal. It can be achieved. It can be done and it's relative to our business and what we do in keeping people safe and sound at home so they can age in place with dignity and grace. And so there you have it, folks. I hope you've enjoyed these last four episodes of A Drink with the Hurricane. I love talking about goal setting and time management because the, the more productive we are, the more focused we are on the big picture, and then the, what are the little everyday measurable tasks and responsibilities that will lead to that ultimate goal? It will just lead to growth, it will lead to success, and it will lead to you dominating your marketing place and blowing away the competition. So